from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Morialy and Hitch. Welcome everybody to the Morielli and Hitch podcast. Mike Morielli here. There's Rob Hitchcock, and we're doing something different today. We are starting right off the bat with our very, very special guest. Um, it's not David Butko. He's nowhere to be found, and uh, you know he's in trouble. Put it that way, he's in trouble. Yeah. And the guy that's going to give him a lot of trouble is the guy that's our special guest today. One time Tiger Cat, long time fan, big time player, big baller. Our buddy, Mr. Jawan Armour. Jawan, how you doing, buddy? Well, hey, man, I appreciate that. Welcome, man. That was very impressive, man. I'm, that was nice. I'm outstanding, bro. Like, I'm going It's good to see you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here, and thank you guys for having me. Man, you look good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm good. trying. I'm trying. I'm on the Hitchcock workout, so you know. A little bit of beer, a little bit of chips, and, and, a, and a very little bit of exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he'll throw some Winstrol in, too. A little Winstrol for for Hitch, too, on the side, just to, <laughs> you know, cap it off. <laughs> Keep young. Oh, right. man. What's going on, Hitch? Let's, so let, for, Juwan, you know, usually we start yeah. the show with a little bit of an open. Him and I talk about nothing. This show is really about nothing. So, you know, there is no yeah. script. Whatever happened, this is like the locker room. You know, f- feel free to feel comfortable. Uh, but generally, Rob and I talk a little bit about the, the, the week that passed with the Thai Cats very briefly, and there ain't much to talk about. This is yeah. now 0-3 wow. uh, at this point in the season. Uh, starting quarterback out. Backup quarterback threw for, what, 345 yards, and they couldn't get a win? Or was that the mm. week before? It doesn't matter. Things are not working yeah, out matter. well at the moment. R- Rob, what do you no, put your feelings on no, that? The- no, they're not. Joe, I don't know if you've been following a little bit up here, if you've been following still, but this year it's kind of the same as last year for Hamilton. They started off last year the same thing. They didn't win a uh, few first couple games. They're 0-3. Uh, again, Montreal and Ottawa are 2-0, and so they're, they're, they're four points away from first place, right? So it's uh, that's how it is up here in the CFL. But, um, you know, Bo Levi Mitchell getting hurt the week prior. Um, big signing in the offseason from Calgary. He went down. He's on the sixth game right now, so... Um, you know, Schultz, Schultz went in, uh, backup quarterback's been in the system for a year. Uh, I liked him last year. Uh, again, he threw for, I think, 300-something yards, Meetsy, but uh, three of those passes were about 180 yards, yeah. right, three of them. And they were, they were balls that were thrown up. Receivers made some great catches on them. Not taking anything away from him. I love him. I think he's a great, great quarterback. They've got a, their defense. And, Joanna, we can bring you in on this one, but... It, I don't know. They've got a lot of veterans. Uh, Simone Lawrence is still there. He's balling. They've got a lot of great guys. I just don't see the chemistry right now. They're not gelling back there. I don't know if they're not communicating properly or they're in the wrong defenses. I think Mark Washington's putting them in, in great positions. They're just not making plays. They're, they're, you got to make plays. Uh, it's frustrating to watch. It's frustrating yeah. to watch. You need someone to step up. Remember, we used to say somebody's got to step up and make a play, and one of us always did. That's not happening right now, and they're. They're getting a lot of points scored on them. Um, you know, the record is 0-3, uh, and I think it should be 0-3 yeah. the way they played the last couple of games. But having said that, um, you know, like I said, they're four points out of first. Left. So it's not a – there's a lot of football left. And it's Great Cup. Joe, I don't know if you know the Great Cup is in is Hamilton. Hampton. I'll year, definitely, so, I'm uh, trying to get Carl Kidd and, and Otis Floyd to come up that oh, way. Yeah. I'll be oh, there. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. there. Uh, that would be a good time. My, yeah, as far as from my hometown in Toledo, so I'll definitely be there. Um, I'm looking forward to that experience too. But one thing I, I want to say about about the about the team right now, I think it's it's just a little bit of learning curve for that cohesiveness. Um, the the good thing is that they have a coaching staff built on former players. I had a chance mm-hmm. to play with Mark yeah. Washington. He was an outstanding player, very knowledgeable yeah. about the game. He he understands how to get guys in the right situations. But I think yeah. with the small training camp and the amount of time they have to be cohesive to build that to gel as a team i think the second half of the season they'll do fairly well oh, they'll they'll definitely improve i would say yeah and, and mm-hmm. let's I'm face it we, we, you know, i'm optimistic yes. i believe that yeah. you're always optimistic buddy yeah. that's how you put up with hitch and i for all those years in the locker room <laughs> yeah, man yeah. this is going to get yeah. better at some point i know it is <laughs> uh but you know you know the cfl is get to the playoffs win your games get to the great cup that's it that's really it. That, you know, the, the season doesn't mean much in retrospect when you look back. 
as long as you're making the playoffs. So, you know, what we like to do, you know, so far this year, over this over the seasons we've been on this, believe it or not, they keep bringing us back for some reason. But we, we've had some great guests on the show, guy, former teammates of yours just recently to start this season. Uh, Tim Cheatwood's been on, so it was great to see Tim, Tim and, and it, chat with him and, and get caught up. We had Corey Grant on last week and, of course, Juwan Armour now. So, Juwan, I, can you give us a little bit of your road to the CFL and your road to Hamilton and then what you got when you got here, what your first impressions were, you know, coming from the U.S., coming from a big-time college? Rob, go ahead. First things, but you did get drafted or you did play for the Raiders, which that's is my pretty team. Cool. So, right? Uh, yeah. cool. When you came in and you told that. me that, I'm like, yeah, I, I like you already. As soon as he came in the locker room, you're a Raider. I love you. <laughs> so give us that, give us that road to, to Hamilton, Juwan. Um, So my, my road, I, I traveled a lot. So I was, again, like he said, I was drafted by the Raiders. Um, I played linebacker in college. Um, uh, uh, outstanding career at Miami, uh, two-time defensive player of the year. Just enjoyed the position. I had always played linebacker. Dra- getting drafted to the NFL, um, they thought I was too small to play linebacker, so they transitioned me to DB, defensive back, safety. Um, I-, I enjoyed the transition. Uh, after my six year, five years in the NFL uh, at safety, I knew my career was coming to an end. The game had transitioned, right? It went from the AFC North where we had Jerome Bettis, Corey Dillon, uh, Jamal Lewis, Eddie George, big backs. Oof, big I come backs. downhill. Yeah, that that that's big backs, big targets. I'm coming down. I'm smacking those guys. You know what I mean? So that's that. I enjoyed that. But once the game evolved to the spread, um, it kind of evolved without me. I couldn't cover that well. Less tight ends, more tight ends out flexed at receiver positions, and so being not being a cover guy. It just evolved without me. And so I kind of knew my career was coming to an end, but I wanted to finish playing uh, the position that I love to play, linebacker. Uh, Canadian football gave me that opportunity with the field being bigger. Uh, actually, in my in my perspective, athletes in Canada have to be a little bit more athletic, uh, a little bit more faster, fields bigger, uh, hashes are tighter, which allows for more space. And so uh, it, it gave me an opportunity to play the position I love to play. And I love the experience. I, I was came in first to B.C., um, I had a very good relationship with Wally Wano, uh, who is I'm a, a tremendous fan of. Um, but in that particular setting, they had linebackers that were established: Otis Floyd, Carl Kidd, uh, Baron Simpson. Uh, all, Oof, all those, are, those players. are players. Yeah, those yeah, are yeah. Players. So, yeah. I worked my way in there every now and then, which um, gave me opportunities in the off season to sign. Came over to Hamilton. Our defense was outstanding at Hamilton. It was it was very blue collar, very similar to the town, and it was. Uh, a good feeling, you know, the, despite not winning as many games our first year, which kind of brought me to that statement of uh, having opportunities to build cohesiveness. And so that second year there, we competed, um, should have had a, a good playoff run, fell short, um, and then on to the Great Cup uh, that next year with Calgary, which we run, we won the Great Cup at Calgary that following year, 2008, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, it was amazing. Montreal, right? You were with Montreal when you won. Yes, that, right? yes. We beat up on Montreal. Montreal. Yeah, 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 yeah. We beat up on Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Montreal. Great experience. Great experience. Uh, and I just enjoyed the process. The people in Canada were always amazing. And, and honestly, I tell my wife now, like, when we when it's said and done, I, I'll probably retire up there. And honestly, nice. it is because of the people. That I've never met a group of people that are very welcoming Um it, no matter what province I was in, you know, and I traveled to Europe. I played in the NFL Europe for a year, uh, but never have met a group of individuals that um, that are as welcoming as the, the citizens in Canada. Amazing. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, and that's just, you know, that's real talk. And while you speak with Sheetwood, you know, Cotton, James Cotton, oh, yeah. uh, his, his, his daughter goes to the school where my son's at. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh. Yeah, I just had Cotton come in and speak to the kids. I work at that school. I, I consult. I, I have my own consulting, um, and I help address issues with behavior issues in students. Uh, and we are outstanding. I just finished as a commissioner of gun violence in the city of Toledo where we reduce homicides in our target no area. No way. Yeah, 66% reduction in homicides. And so uh, it's been a, it's been an amazing process being able to take some of the experiences that have impacted me negatively and address young people so they can have a, a better start than I did. Oh, good for you, man. That's yeah, awesome. that that that's solid. Uh, you go listen. You were a solid player to play against. I, you know, I was I had hit by you many times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was always prepared for it. You know, the best I could. I knew I wasn't going to outrun anybody. But uh, you know, we 
having you on the team you know in hamilton you fit so well like you you came over you came as an established player at that point in time i i know that we were a, a little bit struggling for wins but that locker room we had was just was a good group of dudes that really cared about each other wanted to play for each other and, and i guess you know i don't have you been back to hamilton since since you played i have not yeah no i have not Ooh. no i'm looking so, forward i'll be back september 30th for october 6th for nice. um, i'll be doing the coin toss um and you're so the yeah, alumnus of distinction then you're the alumnus of distinction alumnus coming of up yes. so, excellent yes. that's amazing well you'll be incredibly uh impressed with the new stadium and and how it is and the locker rooms and all the inner workings of it it's you know it's a really cool um cool place to play football now not that it wasn't before but it's a little bit nicer you know it's got got some nice things in it now just the, not just the same lead paint and plywood and right, uh, right. you know bird feces other than that all good it's Which like I'll a new tell field you what, though, I, i'm i'm a hey, mike i'm gonna tell you my two favorite places to play were always hamilton and saskatchewan my two the people favorite. cared the people cared. The people they gave care. a shit. They, oh, excuse my language. They no, love. No, no, it's all okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they love football there, and it was the two best, my two favorite places to play against the Saskatchewan and home for the Ticats. It were they were experiences, you know, and you can't you can't trade that for anything. Wins, losses, doesn't matter when it comes to the experience. I loved watching you play too, buddy. When you were when you were on the other teams, because we had similar games. We came, we left to come downhill and hit people. And I tell you, I don't know about you now, but my <laughs> neck and my, oh, oh. there's there's some there's some stuff going on in the body that I'm like, wow, I didn't know I had those muscles. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been braced cortisone. I've been braced cortisone. <laughs> it is my friend. Uh, I get shots. I get shots every September for my neck right now. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are def. But I tell you what, Hitch, let me ask you this. With all the ailments, all the injuries, I, I also suffer, you know, CTE, uh, which affects my memory of headaches and things like that. But I tell my yeah. kids all the time, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, you could take no, my legs. No. You could take my legs. I wouldn't trade that yeah. experience um, of playing with you guys, playing in the NFL, and being able just to build relationships with people over time. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's been an amazing well, I, journey. I can almost say... I could talk for probably everyone that we had on this show, you know, Danny Mack, right to the Fluties, to everybody, that none of us would change it because we wouldn't be here today doing what we're doing without the people that we met over our careers. And, and that's no joke. I mean, that, as a young guy coming in, I was always told by some guys and some coaches, Don Southern and Ronnie Lancaster, always network yourself, get out there, uh, get, get to the boosters, get to the fans, start talking to people because you know what? Football doesn't last forever. We were fortunate to play 12 years, um, you know, 12, 13 years we played. We were very fortunate. The average lifespan of a CFL, NFL football player is three and a half years. So if you don't have that networking, you're not out there. I feel bad for some guys that don't do that because they don't take advantage of the opportunity that they have. And that's going out and just being yourself and being a person. That could be that guy could give you a job. Yeah, absolutely. You, know? uh, absolutely. you can meet someone in the city that could give you a job that loves the loves the team. So, anyways, I always tell people that now. My son and that he's like, "Would you? Like, you're hurt all the time." I said, "Not hurt. It's, sore, <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry." And he's 16. My son's 16. And he's a uh, he's not playing football, but he's a uh, he's like a four handicap golfer. He's a soccer player. He's a hockey player. Double A hockey player. Got to be a hockey and player. He hits. That's oh a good yeah, he's a damn hockey, hockey player. <laughs> he is and he but he he hits people like in on hockey he's like he's he's got a screw loose like i had and i see it and i'm like man if you could just bottle that up and bring it to a football <laughs> field i'm not forcing him into the game I, i'm not forcing him in but he's in grade 11 right now he's a junior in high school and i said one year high school one year football play receiver because he's quick and he's got good hands i said you need to either do that or go play safety and just play but anyway so i'm trying to get instill in those into his buddies uh just to, to start learning and start talking to people that are older than you to start networking now because we didn't have that in grade 11 my dad was we just we just did what yeah, we did right yeah. now it's you gotta you gotta step up to get a job later on in life i feel sorry for the kids nowadays that are going to look for a house that try to afford a house with our economy in the u.s and yeah. canada it's tough you as you know everybody knows yeah, that but, but absolutely like, that's a very good point that's some of the things you know i still in like I, I speak at nfl teams um I speak to college teams. That's one thing I appreciated in being in Canada as well. Whenever I was on a team, whether it was NFL, Canadian League, it didn't matter. Anytime they wanted anybody to go out in the community, I'm for that. Like, I'm for anything that they need in the community. 
because there are individuals that look like us, came from very similar backgrounds than us, and don't know that there's a way out. Don't doesn't know. But yeah. and the beautiful thing in that is that I'm a first generation college graduate of my whole entire family, mother and awesome. father's side. And that would never been an option if it wasn't for football. That's so right. it's not only the the pursuit of success in, in football, it's just the opportunity that football provides you in regards to being polished, being able to see the world, being able but there's no other sport other than football that has the amount of players from different backgrounds yeah. all working toward one common goal. And right? that, you took the words out of my mouth. That's a hundred percent correct. It is the as much sport. as as much as we're <laughs> bruised and beat up and got headaches and I, I feel your pain, it, it yeah. was worth every second. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it. It really yeah. it has changed all of our lives for the better. It opened our eyes to yeah. so many, to me, to, to meeting individuals like yourself and Tim and, and everybody that we played with. I mean, you know, up here in Canada, if it wasn't for the Americans coming down to, to really come join the CFL, you know, we wouldn't have that big, broader sense of, of the world, right? They, they, everybody brought their own little thing. It, it was pretty cool. So speaking of, of cool, who are the cool cats you played with? Who are the guys that you still hang around with? Who are the guys that you look up to, uh, NFL, CFL, et cetera? Um, well, I, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys. The, the one of the coolest cats that I played with is Hitch, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, and, and that's why I kind of spoke, tell, told Dave this in, in our conversations. He was the most welcoming player that I ever played with, as far as coming to a new country, coming to a new team, and we played very similar positions. And so, the more playing time I got, it kind of jeopardized his playing time. And you know what I mean. So, but still being able to teach me the Canadian game, so I was a little bit more advanced than other Americans that came to the CFL that didn't have that kind of guidance, right? So in, in D.C., yeah. my first team where I was there for two years, it was Mark Washington. Um, yeah. Mark Washington took me under his wing um, <clears throat> in regards to football and really showed me the differences between NFL and CFL. When I got to Hamilton, it was Hitch. You know what I mean? Just being able to be a linebacker, but you're really a downhill safety. You know what I mean? So yeah, don't yeah. get caught up in being a linebacker because we cover up here. And so having that kind of influence and, and that kind of um, leadership allowed me to, you know, have success in the Canadian League. Yeah, that's, those, those are good words. And then the next year, John, we didn't even get to play because Mike and I got cut. <laughs> <Yeah. in> <laughs> <laughs> so you essentially came in and took my job. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I won't go that far. I won't go that far. <laughs> I just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, oh my gosh. That's, that's, but, that's And that's funny. like, that's no, just that was, a real thing. Like, that is a real thing. You build camaraderie with so many players from different backgrounds. Um, and, and, yeah. and being able to do that helps us tra to transcend, like Hitch was saying, in the workforce. I've never, I haven't applied for a job in 15 years. You know what I mean? Uh, but just being able to build relationships, being able to be my authentic self, um, has helped me. I don't change my language for nobody. I go in, this is who I am. And I've, I've, yeah. I've gotten that confidence from football, uh, to be honest with you. You got to think about it, guys. Like, we're strangers and we shower naked together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you know. I mean? I we're looking. Didn't know. Yeah, I yeah. Looking. <laughs> so, you know, so you build relationships and you're forced in uncomfortable positions, but it's all working toward yeah. a common goal. And that's to be successful. Yeah. And, and me and Hitch's a position to have a successful defense on your side of the ball to have a successful team offense and defensively so being able to work together uh, with people from different backgrounds is the reason and why why honestly why i do it and, and why i enjoy pouring the young people uh because they don't understand the world is bigger than the community that they come from and the every decision they make impacts the next decision and so these are skills that I learned from football. And again, I've been able to travel the world with it. What we did in regards to gun violence, I look at that as opportunities to save lives. And so being able to instill decision-making tools with the tool of football has been amazing for me. And, and, that, yeah. and that commitment to the community is, is massive, Joan. I mean, you know, yeah. we, we don't have, thankfully, up here in Canada, the gun violence. It, it exists, don't get me wrong, but we're, we're a little blessed that it's not as prevalent. So for you just to save one life, is a massive, massive accomplishment, and, uh, and and certainly does not surprise me one bit. Knowing you, having played with no. you, played against you, you're a solid dude. Uh, even with that gray beard on and those fake glasses, you, you still look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but I got I got to be honest. I, I, you know, I I I, uh, I always appreciated playing against you because I really I, I really liked you as a player. I liked the way you played, and it's funny. Yeah, we had good conversations. We had, had good conversations. conversations. You know, <laughs> 
because I just like to have fun out there. We both had fun, and we knew it was a game. We knew we'd have to kick the crap out of each other, but it was what it was. And I got you know got to practice against you, uh, play against you, be a teammate of yours. Obviously, the same same with Hitch, right? When I went back and forth between Toronto and Hamilton, be able to go against some of the best of the best only makes you better, right? And, and your point about being an athlete in the CFL is very true. I always tell people, I, I think skill position players can can go back and forth, NFL, CFL. I mean, the offensive, defensive lineman got to be built a little bit different, right? You got to be a run stopper in yeah. the NFL versus you got to cover the field here. And the offensive lineman, same type of thing. But, you know, the what the CFL allowed us to do was to really enjoy football. And, you know, I felt like football was a, was a, is a game, but it is also obviously a business. It's a job. But I never felt like it was a job that I hated. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. And, you know, one of the big things you talked about showering with guys, yeah, I mean, you got to put up with a lot of stuff in our locker room. It wasn't just in the shower. It was everything else. You know, I, we like to have a lot of fun here. But what, what was that? Did it feel different coming to Hamilton? You know, I know the record maybe didn't didn't allow us to have maybe as much fun as we would have, but did it feel different coming from Calgary to a Hamilton? Absolutely, absolutely. I, and so I, I reference when I when I share this experience with people from America who haven't been in Canada, I, I describe it as um, Vancouver is like L.A., Toronto is like New York, uh, Hamilton is like Pittsburgh. It right. is blue collar, uh, hard nose straightforward uh you what you see is what you get uh montreal and uh those that's europe that's not even yep. yes you got a good <laughs> handle on it you got a good handle yeah, yeah. It does, it just help does. me to better relate it does, you know the signs the street the traffic signs are in french and so and they're not as nice in montreal <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, so no. but it, that's why and i think that's what being from toledo ohio uh ohio is very blue collar and, it, and, it, and it's in its nature and so uh i fit right in at hamilton absolutely yeah i should have i should have came oh. back but they ain't they ain't want to give me no money so see that's the problem here this is the problem we, we hitch and i have this problem all the time when we were going on our run and this is the old regime so i can't lump in the new regime to this but in our old run we were going back to back great cups and there we are getting ready for 2000 and we think we can have it you know go back one more time and we're losing guys over five grand yeah. Right, ten yeah. grand, yeah. And, and now yeah. you take a look at the salaries in the, in the CFL, and you know our best years. There's guys in in their second year, third year, making that kind of money, and, I, and good for them. I think that that's it's a sport that you need to get yeah. paid, right? Because it's a fleeting uh, moment; anything could change. But we did Absolutely. it for the love of the game, and for the love of the guys in the locker room, love of the community, uh, and those are all the reasons why. If you, if that doesn't make you a better person, if those experiences don't shape you in some way then you're missing out on on the whole purpose of, of the game right the game is bigger than just what happens on the field absolutely and we don't, I, I we don't, have, a, we don't have a nickel left and we have no money we don't have a nickel left, left no money, we, no money no left, money. left when we play. no <laughs> money left right. but it was fun it's, it was a hell it's of definitely fun. not about the money it's definitely not about the money but that is a very good <laughs> statement you will be missing out <laughs> on the experience if you think it's about the money not about the people not about the experience not about your teammates uh the money comes and goes. I've never, I, I've been fortunate enough. I've never, I've been an attitude. I've never been concerned about money really as opposed to like being able to acquire things and buy, right. even as a child. Uh, Cause I felt like, you know, I can get the same girls that y'all getting. I can talk. I can talk. You didn't think you might have. <laughs> right, right. And so it was all about the experience for me. Uh, but like you said, it's, it's a beautiful thing when they're able to make uh, a living. Uh, but I've never, even in the NFL, I've never only just played football. Every offseason I taught, I, I was especially a teacher. Whether I was in Canada or in the NFL, I never had an offseason where I didn't work. And so, um, and I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed powering, uh, empowering young people. And so, uh, those are the things that I'm passionate about. And so, when you have an opportunity to play football, everything else is a bonus. And so, I just appreciated that yeah. journey. Well, we're we're so looking forward to see you October. You so said, they're right? trying to sign on two October. dates, uh, September thirtieth okay. or October sixth. Okay, uh, one is, is one is BC okay. and one is Calgary. So one of those, either one to be oh, good. You're good. You're yeah. good either way. Yeah, you're good. Right, right. Yeah, uh, I can't I can't wait to see it, man. It's like we've never missed a beat. What been for sixteen years? That, but that's what football Probably does. Having, that's what football does. Hey? And, and those and you got to think about it, Hitch, especially being American coming up there. Um, 
it's just like college, right? When we have situations yeah. with our family, situation, loss of life, it could be a death, you know what I mean? Yeah. Only people that can console us in that moment are our teammates. The only people we can turn to and yeah. talk to when we have issues with our family, our wife, our children, are our teammates. Whether or not if I've known you for 20 years or if I've known you for two, you know what I mean? And so yeah. having those relationships, we, we will we'll never miss a beat. If we don't talk again for another 20 years, we still won't miss a beat because the love is there. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> So, so Juwan, give me a give me a look right. I see you got you got Biggie looking over your right shoulder there from behind. I can see yep. you got uh, what's that jersey? Is it yours up top? What's the one down so, below? I just can't see the name. So up top is my Calgary jersey. That's what I wore right. for the Great Cup. We won. Underneath yep. is Mark Roman uh, from LSU. He was my teammate with the Bengals. Um, over on the f- uh oh, I'm messing up. Uh, too much <laughs> over you good? on. You good? The top right is Dustin Cohen. That's the St. Louis Rams uh, championship jersey. He sent me that in the mail. I never knew it was coming. Uh, really? Played in college. And right under that is Joaquin Bradley's. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got killer, Excellent. Yeah, I got killer jersey up there. Uh, that's, a Hamilton, <laughs> Tiger, that's a Hamilton Tiger Cats jersey. Joaquin. Yeah, yeah, so Joaquin you know, I, 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 surround, I surround my office with my stuff. My workout room, I have my... Uh, are my, my Bengals jerseys, my college jerseys, and things like that. But up here, it's more of the people that, you know, that I, I appreciate helping me along the journey. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to give you that jersey oh, behind my shoulder right now. Give it I to like him. It. I like it. When I come there, y'all going to have to help it. me get a helmet, man. I'm short. One helmet, and that's uh, a helmet listen, for Tiger Cats. This is what I Dave, explained. Dave will get you this one. This is what I explained to Cheatwood. When you show up at the end of September, October, whenever you're there, <clears throat> because you've been on the podcast – at the stadium, you just go into the store, the Thai Cat store, you take whatever you want. Just take I'm whatever a, you want. And I'm going to tell them you sent me. 100%. Yeah. Tell them we sent you. You take whatever you want. Whatever is not bolted down, yeah. just take. Okay? I'm going to you take the store. And I, I'll bring my wallet just in case. <laughs> just in case. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but you won't need it. Yeah. Okay? Okay. I'm going to tell them Mike sent me. Yeah, just tell us that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get you a helmet. We'll, we'll, fig- we'll figure all that stuff out. <laughs> I guarantee you're going to get a jersey. For sure, you're going to get a yeah. jersey. Fair enough. Fair we'll enough. try to find. We'll just take stuff after that. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> right, right, right. Dave's Dave's cringing right now. Dave's <laughs> right. cringing right now. The second person we've told to just take <laughs> oh, everything. Yeah. Well, listen. Dude, we have <laughs> a new producer the today. First yeah. No, it uh, hasn't happened yet. But that's okay. okay. <laughs> but, but it certainly worked out for Rob and I. So don't <laughs> give. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've used that yeah. trick a few times, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it's payback oh, for having to put up with us on the on this show, but. Uh, <laughs> So what's a day in the life of jo- Juwan Armour like now? Um, so I, 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 work, I consult now with school districts and communities to address gun violence and behavior issues, whether or not it's in school, um, any acts of violence. It could be fighting, bullying, cyber bullying. Um, and, just, uh, and I also work with a curriculum called Seven Mindset. It is very dope. You guys will love it. Um, and it's based on the thinking of having individuals follow their passions, right? If you follow your passion, never, no day feels like work. And so it is an unbelievable curriculum. Hopefully when I come up there for the 30th or the 6th, whenever that date is, I'm able to visit some school districts and kind of share my experiences. I would love to talk to the kids awesome. in, in Hamilton, um, come with my Grey Cup ring. And, yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, that is what it's about because what you guys have to understand, this gun violence thing is not just, it's bad in the United States because of our policies and how we view guns and violence. That's primarily yeah. the issue. But the the how guns are being distributed across the country, it's going to make its way up there sooner or later. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys kind of get the backlash of all of that negative stuff sooner or later. And so being, being able to address that uh, has been has been very fulfilling for me. You know what I mean? And, and you guys, I have some kids that are amazing that I work with. And, and being able for them to be able to articulate their story and advocate for other kids who are very similar situations, you know, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. You got a, you got an out right now, right? You got to go in a couple minutes. What's your yeah, time yeah, I like? Yeah, I have a ten o'clock. Yep, I have a ten o'clock. Again, the curriculum is called Seven Mindsets. If you guys are interested, or anybody that watches the uh, podcast, yeah. check it out. SevenMindset.com. It is amazing. It is amazing. If you are a school administrator in a school district, um, you should definitely check this out. We are in Toronto and a couple of schools in Toronto, and I'm hoping to kind of expand um, or help them expand the program in Hamilton and other areas. Well, let us let us know if you need a hand with that. Mike and I could introduce you to some people, and you know, I know you've got 
ties in Hamilton, but if you if you need a well, listen, the cats. Juwan just said he's ready and willing to do some visits when he's in town. I'm sure that the yeah. cats would be more than than happy to to help figure something like that out because uh, you got For an sure. alumni For like sure. that coming back wanting to do good. Uh, you know, Juwan, you, you're impressive on the field, impressive off the field, and uh, yeah, it's great to talk to you, man. It's great to get caught up, see you doing so well, right? Because you know, we all escape. When football's done, we all try and find our path, and it's it's never easy. Uh, sometimes it's harder for others, than, than, but to see, you know, talking to Cheat doing great and talking to Corey doing great and yourself and Danny and Darren, and it, it's a very good feeling to know that we're not trying, we're not leaving anybody behind, right? Yeah. And if somebody's not doing well, we need to know because Absolutely. the boys will come together and, and help. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that, Mike. And also, I want to say, like, it's been a process. Like, you guys know me. Uh, so I give the world a little or, or, or your viewers a little bit uh, of what I mean. This year, I celebrate 11 years of no violence. Perfect. No violence. Beautiful. 11 wow. years. But prior to that, when I was 36, um, I started going to counseling because I was just angry all the time. Um, and I realized from the age of 14 to the age of 36, I had been in one fight every year of my life. Um yeah. At, at least one fight. And so, you know, and for, for a lot of things, you know, uh, my childhood experiences, the way I grew up, uh, for a lot of things. But if we have issues that we constantly arrive in our life, it's our responsibility, especially as men, as fathers, um, as contributors to our community, find out what those issues are and get help for them. And for me, it was, it was somebody to be able to talk to, somebody that can talk to me with the unbiased opinion. Again, I have a very big family, but they can kind of be biased in their advice that I'm not wrong when I'm absolutely wrong some of those times. But being able to address yeah. those issues and have somebody to help me work through them is how I've been able to find success and happiness. Uh, that's Congrats, great. Man. And so how, what, what got you there? What made you pick up the phone or write an email to get to that point? Because that, that is the hardest point is getting yeah. is admitting and, that I, you I, have I, a problem. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. So I got to tell you guys, y'all don't know. A lot of people don't know this, right? I have five felony charges, charges, never convicted. I don't have anything on my record, anything. But I was I was charged three times for aggravated assaults against police officers and two times for individuals in the community. Again, I've never been convicted on anything. Uh, my record is is clean. But at at 36, I had I had to identify why do I keep having these run ins. Right. Um, and honestly, it came from something I was taught very young. My mom, my family taught me, we don't want problems, but we don't run from them. Um, right. And so with that thinking, I have to address every issue I have with the same aggression that was brought to me. And I, I necessarily, I don't have to do those things. Walking away is just as powerful as addressing that aggression. But that's not how I learned it. I, I learned it the way that it was taught to me. Um, right. We're not running from nothing. We're going to handle it as it comes. Uh, but that doesn't mean violence. That doesn't mean fighting. That doesn't mean uh, negative outcomes for me. And so, uh, again, I learned this at 36. And if I would have learned this at 18, at 17, at 16, my life would have looked tremendously different. Um, hopefully better. Um, and it's pretty good now. But having that having that understanding, it's, I'm, I'm responsible I'm, I'm responsible to pour that into other kids that come right. from environments like me, other kids who grew up in single parent homes, other kids who grew up poor, other kids that were around violence and other kids that were on substance abuse. And so uh, if we don't if we don't take this charge, you know, who's going to do it? And so uh, it's been amazing. It's been outstanding th throughout this process. Well, well said, John. That's uh, that's unbelievable. Like the impact that you've that you've had you know, in your society and in, in, in your area. That's, yeah, that gives me, uh, gives me chills. And man. the impact just, you just had on the chills. field in the locker room, because like you, you were one of us, right? We were all the same. I, I don't yeah. think we ever, ever once looked at anybody differently. You taught us. I lived the Casey you know. different. I lived the Casey different. Let me say that on, on record. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only guy. He's, I have to say that. I looked at Casey definitely different. But that we'll leave that for another story. <laughs> we'll leave that yeah, for another, another day. day is right. right. But, you know, you have, uh, you, you like I said, you were impressive on the field. You are impressive off the field. I'm glad that yeah. uh, that you found something that makes you feel better. And now you're pouring that in, into the, the youth. Because if you can get them before they turn 36, when they're still impressionable, when they're still in their teenage years, you know, and I, I you have a story to tell. 
and you can't keep that story inside, right? That that's something that you need to share and help, and you're doing that. And I'm 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 gonna say I'm proud of you, not because I, I for any other reason. I'm, I'm just proud of you, man. This is good. Like I, I really yeah. enjoy Hitch and I enjoy. Well, I hit, Hitch and I talk whatever, but when I we get to talk to to the boys and come on, we haven't seen in a while, and just to see the smiles and talk about the old times that that makes us feel great too. Very dope, man. Hey, man, I'm looking forward to seeing y'all in a couple weeks, man. So, yeah, we'll definitely catch up. I think I'm going to just stay a couple days uh, and just hang around. Uh, so we'll definitely catch up. Awesome. We got to, we got to, after we wrap up here, we'll, uh, we'll grab your number when we're off the air here. So, okay. Yeah. So I got to we'll jump on this that. other we'll call. The uh, but we're Dave has that. my information. Make sure we're, you we're going to, we're, we got to wait a sec so we can do some. Mike will finish it off here and then we'll. Uh, yeah, we're do- we just, just got to upload up. wait, it. Wait, wait one minute. 30 seconds here. So listen, let's just upload this thing now. This is the Morial and Hitch podcast. Juwan Armour is the guest today and he rocked it like usual. From Mike Morielli, Rob Hitchcock, Juwan, and David Butko is obviously sleeping somewhere. <laughs> it's the Morial and Hitch yeah. podcast. podcast. We'll talk to you guys soon. That's another episode of Mori Alley and Hitch on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Have a question or a comment for them? Email us at mnh at ticats.ca. That's M-A-N-D-H at ticats.ca.